Hello, welcome to another video. Uh, this is going to be, I've talked about my wading boots and some waders and some other stuff pertaining to fly fishing. Um, so today I was going to present to you the vise I use to tie some of my flies. Um, this is a peak rotary vise, as you can see by this right here. It's a rotary function. Um, I've had this for close to three years now, and I've made some uh, adaptations to it, if you will. Not necessarily modifications. Everything with the vise is standard that you get with it when you buy it. Um, but I did add some things to it. So when you buy the vise, you get the vise itself, the base plate, and the bobbin cradle. Um, I ordered the brass uh, rotary tighting screw and the brass screw for the bobbin cradle tension. Um, I have the, what you see here is a tool caddy. It's made by Regal. Um, it's very nice. It's a machine aluminum and anodized in blue. Um, and it holds tools like so. Um, I have all the tools out of it right now so you can see it. So you can put uh, bobbins, which is what this is, a whip finish tool, which is what this is, um, and a myriad of other things that you can think of. Now, the base plate comes with three holes drilled in it at three eighths inch diameter. Um, so I made this aluminum dowel here, this one, and then this short one here to hold what's this is called a profiler so when you're tying and you're looking at the fly this doesn't nothing behind here obscures your view and your eyes can focus on the fly not having something behind there really makes my eyes tired because i end up going cross-eyed um this is the standard jaws that come with uh, your peak uh, these this will hold uh a size 22 all the way up to a one aught hook i've tied on that um, i added the i don't even know what this thing's called it's a, a hackle gauge and what you do is you take the feather and you bend it around this and where the spines come out will tell you what size hook it corresponds to when you're tying um, i have this little magnet down here it will hold hooks for me just like this uh, it comes with an indentation milled into the base plate for holding beads and so on and so forth. I never use it. Um, it's a wonderful vise. It's very strong, very sturdy, easy, easy to use, uh, brass and steel construction. It is able to be disassembled with just these C clips right here. There's bearings in here. If for some reason you need to do that. I did buy the material holder, which is this little spring device right here. If you have your hook in and you've got a bunch of feathers or twine and wire, um, you can stick it into this spring here. Um, if you can see it, it rotates on the, the shaft and you can move it back and forth um, like so. Um, I'm not really sure how long this will last. It's gotten a lot loose, uh, a little bit more pliable over the last couple of years that I've had it. Uh, this is just held on with some Velcro, so I can take it off. Um, I think the base weighs about three pounds. It's pretty stout. Um, I added this. This is the one thing I did make. It's a It, it kind of orients the rotary function a lot easier than just having this straight stem. Um, my only real complaint with the vise is it should have a handle that goes this way. Um, it's easier to turn. Um, I just uh, cut this brass, drilled the hole, measured the diameter of that, I think it was quarter inch, and then just milled a, a small rim around it in brass to kind of match everything else. Um, if you're looking to get into fly tying, um, you can buy really cheap vices um, at your local big box store, but I'm going to tell you, you're not going to be happy with it. This is probably the most affordable 
fly tying vise out there. Um, they were like 149, but I think they've gone up to about 169, maybe 179, just like the cost of everything, it's gone up. Uh, but if you find that you are really interested in fly fishing and then you want to get into fly tying, um, there's it's it's a fun thing to do to catch fish on flies that you've tied. Um, uh, there's a lot of reading to be done. There's a lot, you can tie uh, just about anything the way you want to tie it. Nothing is perfect. The fish don't care. Um, then there's you know, other accoutrements that you'll get into, such as scissors. Um, uh, bobbins, bodkins, um, uh, hackle pliers, which is what that is, and that right there, hackle pliers. Um, you get into hair stackers, which is what this is. Um, you put your deer hair or whatever inside here, tap it, open it up, and you will retrieve the hairs that are all now one even length. Um, this is what I didn't start with. I did start with, a, and I still have it, it came with an Orvis fly tying kit that was about 30 years old. And it was, um, it, it worked. And it just, it, when you really need to get your tying a fly, and sometimes there's material that you have to put at the bottom of the hook, or you wanna check the, the symmetry of your fly, um, it is nice to have it to rotate it and if there is some bigger fly that you have to do lots of wrappings you can do this motion here to wrap the material around the fly such as if we're putting this hook in like so and you had a lot of material to put on there I don't know if you can see it um, there you go see profiler comes in handy um, if you had to wrap a bunch of stuff, see how that stays in there. Now, theoretically, a true rotary vise would keep the spine of the shaft in parallel with where the vise rotates. Um, this is as close as this one can get. Now, you can, depending on where you place the hook in the jaws, it's pretty darn close. Um, the fish aren't going to care if the fly was tied on a true rotary vise or not. Okay. Um, I did put, as far as the profiler goes, since I'm showing you it does work, um, I did drill extra holes so I can set it up higher if I'm tying much bigger flies. Um, if I'm tying smaller flies, I can put it down here. And then I have the middle one here. If I can get it in there. There. Just like that. So this was just a piece of plastic that I had. I cut and it sits just like that. So now I have a profiler, I have a tool caddy on my vise, I have the hackle gauge, bobbin, a magnet. So this will last me the rest of my life. Um, it is a wonderful thing to tie on. It's a wonderful thing to learn how to do tie your own flies. Um, I strongly encourage you to do that. If you wanna start out, Go buy a cheaper vise for, you know, 30, 40, 50 bucks. Uh, learn to tie one simple fly. Um, and I'm gonna recommend that be the woolly bugger. A woolly bugger fly is the most prolific fly you can use. You can tie it in a myriad of colors, styles. Sorry, my heat just kicked in. Uh, it is cold today. <laughs> so, gotta have the heat on. Okay, so get out there, learn to tie. Uh, go to your local fly shop. A lot of places they have tying nights where you can go in there and people will be tying flies. Um, usually once a month they'll have, you know, four or five, six, seven amateur fly tires come in and people out, you know, on the general public will come in and tie flies. So, you know, enjoy, learn how to do it, have a good time, and uh, we'll see you later.